Welcome back to the channel everyone, thank you for joining me again. Today we'll be talking about one of the oldest clubs that lasted in Reno and a very large part of Reno's casino history. We'll be talking about the Herald's Club which was open from 1935 all the way until 1995. It all started when Harold Smith Sr. borrowed $500 from his father, Raymond Pappy Smith, to start Harold's Club. The whole Smith family would be in on this journey together. So it was Harold Smith, his brother, and Pappy Smith opening the doors with their wives as employees. Harold's Club opened with a single penny roulette game as well as a so-called flash wheel. They also opened up with only two slot machines, one nickel and one dime slot machine. This place was very small when it first opened up, but it wouldn't take long for this place to blow up. The club was located at 236 North Virginia Street, which is at the corner of Commercial Row and Virginia Street, prime spot for the Herald's Clubs to be located. Later into 1935, they added blackjack, and shortly after, a Klondike game, Fantan, Craps, and a Red Dog game. Now, I've never heard of Klondike or Red Dog before, but looking into Klondike, it seems to be a variation of craps and poker put together, and Red Dog is another form of cards. Herald's Club was also the place that announced Mouse Roulette to Reno, which is very interesting. In May of 1938, the first race horse Kino game was tried, and it didn't succeed. But they tried again soon, and they ended up opening a horse race book at Herald's Club. The place was growing at such a rapid pace, it was outgrowing the original building space that they were in, so they leased the property next door to increase their gaming to 26 slot machines, 4 craps tables, 1 pan game, 1 big 6 wheel, 1 poker game, 2 roulette games, and 5 blackjack tables. Talking about gaming, many other chips were on various different molds. Starting out on small key molds in the 30s, then moving into TRK or TR King company chips. Into the 50s, they moved on to the HCE mold, chips which feature color inlays and the faces of the owners. Um, each one had their own variation, which I think was just awesome. Looking at the chips found on Chip Guide as well, it's very interesting that they had $20 chips in the 50s, which I'm not too sure what they would be using them for, my guess would be poker or some type of blackjack. Chips made in 1941 featured the letters FAB, which are for Fred A. Beck, who was a friend of Pappy's. Pappy asked Beck to lease the racehorse Kino game for him, and Beck also told Pappy that he had a lease for pan and poker. So that's when those games were introduced, but that could also be what those chips were used for. Something also very interesting is that they had $500 and $1,000 chips in the 50s, which in today's money is something like $4.7,000 to $5,000. Harold's Club was booming in the 40s, and this was when Reno was the Vegas of Nevada. Gaming was huge, and Reno, in my eyes, gave Vegas a blueprint to follow. All those small clubs near each other in downtown showed what was possible when people wanted to gamble. Places like the Herald's Club, Nevada Club, Harrah's, Mapes, and others showed that making something big could easily be done. The Herald's Club was known as the Friendly Club. Many who went there got to meet with the owners and felt like they were somewhere they had visited multiple times. Everyone was having fun, everyone was very friendly, and they made you feel like you were at home. They were also the first people to introduce female dealers into the gaming business, which was a very big deal and a great move at the time. Into the 40s, when American troops were going to defend the US in World War II, many women needed a way to make some type of money, so many went to casinos to get jobs in places like Reno. At Harold's Club during World War II, it was said that 9 out of 10 employees were women. In September of 1941, the Washoe County Commissioners even tried to get rid of female dealers, which wasn't really fair at the time. The Herald's Club was doing so well with everyone around town that dealers from places like the Palace Club, Bank Club, and others were coming to the Herald's Club after work to play and were able to get tips from the Herald's Club dealers to better themselves. Into 1947, the club would get licensed for even more games and slot machines as well as expanding. They also opened their covered wagon room, which had the first escalator in Nevada. 
The mural that was on the front side of Harold's Club was done by Theodore McFall. It was made of 220 separate porcelain mosaic panels and was said to be the largest such project ever undertaken. It cost around $60,000 and took four months to complete. Getting into 1950, the club had basically doubled in size and now had around 500 slot machines, 46 table games, chuck luck and Kino. A few months later, they would purchase more properties surrounding their place to expand even more. To get an idea how popular the Herald's Club was, their management reported on Labor Day weekend of 1952, 44,206 people passed through the doors on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Pappy Smith made sure that he advertised the Herald's Club as much as possible, using their slogan, Herald's Club or Bust, and it shows that it was paying off. It was the largest casino at the time, and just a year later, after getting their license expanded, they expanded again. This time to have 10 craps tables, 10 roulette tables, 28 blackjack tables, and over 600 slot machines. The 1955 movie Five Against the House was mostly filmed inside of Harold's Club, featuring Guy Madison, Kim Novak, and Brian Keith. While watching the movie, you're able to see the Harold's Club's so-called pigeonhole parking garage that used a forklift mechanism which raised and loaded slash unloaded the cars to their desired location. There were multiple different situations where groups of men played roulette winning a huge amount of money and watching the wheel for days on end to figure out which number to bet on. In January of 1960, the Herald's Club opened Room 25, which commemorated the casino's 25th anniversary. In this room, they featured the very internationally popular game of Baccarat, which made the club the first to offer Baccarat in Reno, but this would also make sense as to why they had the $20 chips as well. In the early 60s, the Smiths would sell the Herald's Club to a New York investment firm, the Wubble Corporation, but they leased back the casino. The Smiths ultimately were still owners of the Herald's Club. In December of 1964, Herald's Club purchased the Colony Club, which was located nearby where the Herald's Club was, and they planned to remodel it as it, the latest expansion. This expansion was licensed for another 63 slot machines, one craps table, one roulette table, three blackjack tables, and one kino game. In 1967, they would be the first to introduce $25 slot machines, and they converted two $1 slot machines to do this. In 1970, there was a headline story in the Nevada State Journal that reported that Howard Hughes had purchased the Herald's Club. No sale price was announced, but $11 million was the estimate. On June 11th, Jesse Beck, who was the owner of Jesse Beck's Riverside and wife of Fred Beck, was noticed that her lease on the Kino game would be terminated about two weeks later. Once Hughes purchased the Herald's Club, things got more into a corporate-run show, not so much like today, but the early stages of it. In 1985, the club turned 50 years old, and many of the original Smith family owners were starting to pass away. Things were starting to change, and at the time, they had over 1,500 slot machines, 61 table games, 3 kino counters, 2 restaurants, 5 bars, and over 1,500 employees. In 1988, Harold's Club would get taken over by Lincoln Management Group, and then into the 90s, Phil Griffith, president and chief executive officer, then owner of Harold's Club, announced that they had entered an agreement to sell the casino to a New Jersey com gaming company called Gamma International. Gamma International had plans to turn the Harold's Club to something like Harold's Club Down Under to have an Australian theme, but the sale was called off in early 1996. Harold's Club was a place to be in Reno during the boom of the 40s and 50s. The Smith family was known for being the kindest owners and treated everyone like they were at home, which made them very successful and helped grow the Harold's Club so quickly. The memory of the Harold's Club will forever be remembered by those in casino history, as well as those in Reno. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you have any memories or know of stories from the Harold's Club, feel free to comment them down below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing as it helps me know that there's new people watching. Thank you again for watching and joining me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's been Oscar, and peace.